we're going to be talking about factoring quadratic trinomials with a leading coefficient that's not 1. So these tend to be the most difficult for a lot of students, you know, factoring these types of uh, uh, quadratic trinomials. But basically, remember, quadratic just means that it's a second degree, so like uh, x squared. And a trinomial means the three terms. Okay, the terms are separated by minus or plus. And the leading coefficient, not 1, means that this one that it starts off with here is going to be something other than 1. So the first thing you want to look at when you're doing factoring, the most important step in factoring, sometimes often skipped, is you want to make sure that you factor out the greatest common factor. So you look at all the terms and you say, is there something I can divide out of all these terms you know, besides 1? Well, for this one, it looks like we can factor out a 3. So if we divide all these by 3, this is going to be x squared minus x minus 6. So all I did was I divided these by 3. Now you can check your work if you distribute the 3 back into the parentheses. You should get back that original trinomial. But now we want to see if we can factor it further. So we say, what two numbers multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 1? Well, that's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2, because negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, but negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So this negative x is like negative 1. And we just bring down the 3, and that's it. Now, if we were solving, if this was equal to 0, we would set each group equal to 0 and solve. But again, the first key is to, to see if you can factor out that greatest common factor, the GCF. Now, the next uh, type of problem we want to look at is when there's not necessarily a greatest common factor that you can factor out. You always want to look for that first, but in this case, there's nothing we can divide out of all three terms, nothing uh, in common. And so you can see that the leading coefficient's not 1 like it was over here once we factored out the greatest common factor. So what do we do in this case? Well, there's the trial and error method that you probably learned in Algebra 1. But another method that's a little bit uh, more process-oriented, a lot of students like this method, is you take the A times the C. So you take the 6 times negative 15, and you say to yourself, uh, what two numbers multiply to negative 90, but those same two numbers have to add to positive 1. So I'm just multiplying 6 times negative 15. What multiplies to negative 90, but it adds to that uh, middle coefficient, which is 1. So once you figure that out, that's the easiest, uh, that's the toughest part, then the rest is easy. So let's see, it looks like this is going to be positive 10 and negative 9 because 10 times negative 9 is negative 90, but 10 plus negative 9 is positive 1. So now what we do is, we, uh, this is called splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping. So what you do is you, you split that middle term, and you would say this is 10x and negative uh, 9x. Okay, you can see how those add up to 1x, and I'm just getting the 10 and the negative 9 from here. You bring down the negative 15, and you bring down the 6x squared. Now you've got 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. When you have four terms, you think about factoring by grouping. So what you do is you group the first two, and you group the last two. So what's the greatest common factor? What can we divide out of this group? Well, it looks like it's going to be 2x, and we're going to be left with 3x plus 5. Here, what can we factor out? Well, it looks like we can factor out a negative 3, and we're left with 3x plus 5. Now, just a couple of tips here. Again, you want to make sure that you're factoring out the greatest common factor. Now, if you factor something out and you look and you say, well, there's, oh, there's something else I could have, you know, I can factor out further, that means you didn't factor out the largest quantity. So you go back, make sure you're factoring out the largest quantity. The other thing that you want to pay attention to is if you have a negative here, you want to factor out a negative. So if that, in that group, if the first one's negative, I factor out a negative quantity. If this was negative, I'd factor out a negative quantity. And the reason you, you know, you know you're on the right track is because you see what's in parentheses. See how they both have a 3x plus 5? Like in this group, there's a 3x plus 5. In this group, there's a 3x plus 5. So now if we factor out the 3x plus 5 as a greatest common factor, like divide both these by 3x plus 5, you're going to be left with 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3. Now you can check your work. If you take the 3x plus 5, that whole thing, distribute to 2x, you get back this first group. 3x plus 5 times negative 3, you get back that second group. And you've got it. Now the nice thing about factoring is you can always you know, foil this out, multiply it out, and you're going to get back the original so you know you, you're on the right track. Okay, let me show you another example. Want to learn Algebra 2? Check out my Learn Algebra 2 video course for sale where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 2. We go through the important formulas, concepts, as well as numerous examples to help you master Algebra 2. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. Okay, let me show you another example. Just go through the steps. So see if you can get this down. You take A times C. So you say, what two numbers multiply to 20? See, 5 times 4 is 20. 
but those same two numbers have to add to the middle coefficient, which is negative 21. So let's see, what would that be? Multiplies to 20, but adds to negative 21. Hmm, looks like it's going to be negative 20 and negative 1, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to split that middle term. Negative 20x and negative 1x adds up to negative 21x. I'm just getting these numbers from over here on the right. You bring down the plus 4 and you bring down the 5x squared. Now you've got, instead of a trinomial, you've got four terms. And we have four terms. What you do is you group the first two, you group the last two. Now, I didn't really make a point of this on the last one, but see, these are really not multiplied together. There's really like a plus sign in between, okay? But I'm just showing you put parentheses around the first two terms and the last two terms. Then you see, what can you factor out? Well, it looks like we can factor out a 5x out of both of these. And it looks like if we can factor out a negative 1 out of both of these. Now, again, you can check. If you take the 5x and you distribute it back in, you get 5x squared minus 20x. If you distribute the negative 1 in, you get negative 1x and a positive 4. Notice they have an x minus 4 in common in this group and in this group. But if we factor out that x minus 4, it's kind of like doing the distributive property backwards you're left with 5x minus 1. Now again, if you FOIL this out or multiply it out, you're going to get back the original. Okay, let's jump into some examples so you can get some more practice. So we've got a bunch of them here for us. So the first one, it says factor. Okay, now remember, first step in factoring is to see if there's a greatest common factor. So you always want to do that first. That's always number one, right? So is there something you can divide out of all three of these? Well, it looks like 3. So if we divide all these by 3, we get 14x squared plus 11x plus plus Two. Now, again, I always kind of look to see if there's something else I can factor out. Uh, let's say, for example, I could factor out a 2. Then I would factor out that 2, multiply it by 3, that'd be 6. And then, you know, you should have really factored out a 6 originally. But in this case, it looks like 3 was the greatest common factor. Then we say 14 times 2, that's 28. What two numbers multiply to 28 but add to 11? So I'll just put that up here. Multiplies to 28 but has to add to 11. Well, it looks like that's going to be 7 and 4. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 plus 4 is 11. So we split the middle term into 7x and 4x, and we bring down the 14x squared and the 2. Now we have four terms. We just group the first two, group the last two. Remember, these are added in between. So we have to now factor out the greatest common factor, which is going to be 7x, which leaves us with 2x plus 1. Here we can factor out a 2, which leaves us with 2x plus 1. See how they have a 2x plus 1 in common? So when we factor this, it's going to be 7x plus 2, 7x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. A little tight on space there, but these are multiplied together. Okay, let's go to the number 2. So number 2, how would you factor this one? So see if you can pause the video. 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. Well, there's different ways to do this. One way to do it is to do the 4 times 25, which is 100. So what two numbers multiply to 100 but add to negative 20. Or if you recognize that this is a perfect square, see 2x times 2x, 5 times 5, 2x times 5 is 10x, doubled is 20x. So when we factor this, this is actually going to be 2x minus 5, the quantity squared. We talked about this in the last lesson, so if you need to go back to review perfect square trinomials. But you can also do the method we did up here where you split the middle term and factor by grouping. Okay, but this one you should get 2x minus 5, the quantity squared, or 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. Okay, number three, what do you think for this one? 2y squared minus 162. What would you do for that one? Well, it looks like here we could factor out a 2. Remember, that's our greatest common factor. And then it looks like we're left with a difference of two squares, which we talked about this in the last section, y plus 9 and y minus 9, and we bring down that 2. So if we were to multiply all this together, we get back the original. Number four, hmm, is there a greatest common factor? Let's see, 12y squared plus 14y minus 20. What do you think for that one? It looks like 2, so 6y squared plus 7y minus 10. What multiplies to negative 60 but adds to 7? Hmm, let's write that out. It multiplies to negative 60 but adds to positive 7. Hmm, looks like 12 and 5, so 12 and negative 5. Remember, 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative to multiply to negative 60, but 12 plus negative 5 is the positive 7. So if we split that middle term now, we get 12y and negative 5y, right? Bring down the 6y squared. And you can see now all we have to do is group, group, factor out the greatest common factor. So this is going to be 6y, which gives us y plus 2. Factor out a negative 5, which gives us y plus 2. 
And here, we can see we have a y plus 2 in common, so if we factor that out, we get y plus 2, and we're left with 6y minus 5. But you see this 2 here? You don't want to forget about this 2. Bring that down, put it in front. If you multiply all those together, you're going to get back the original. Okay, let's go to number 5 and 6. These ones say solve, so it's really just like the ones we just did. But you see how it's equal to 0? Once you factor it, you have to set those factors equal to 0. So, hmm, first step, greatest common factor. No, it doesn't look like there's any. 10 times negative 4, what multiplies to negative 40, but also has to add to negative 3, those two numbers. So it looks like, what's that going to be? Negative 8 and positive 5, right? So if we split the middle term, negative 8y, positive 5y, that adds up to negative 3y, bring down the first and last term, then group the first two, group the last two, and realize that these are added together still. Factor out the greatest common factor, which is 2y. Here we can factor out just a 1, really, because there's really nothing we can factor out, so just factor out a 1. That's 5y minus 4. This was actually supposed to be 5y minus 4, because 2y times 5y is 10y squared. But notice how there's a 5y minus 4 in common. So if you factor the 5y minus 4 out, you're left with 2y plus 1. Again, if you want to see, if you distribute the 5y minus 4 to the 2y, you get back this group. 5y minus 4 distributed to the 1 gives you back this group, and you've got it. Now, the only thing we have to do now is because it's an equation, it's equal to 0, we have to set 5y minus 4 equal to 0 and solve. So we add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 5. So it looks like y equals 4 fifths is one of our answers. And if we set 2y plus 1 equal to 0, that's going to give us negative 1 divided by 2. That looks like it's going to give us negative 1 half. So we're getting 4 fifths and negative 1 half. Number 6, hmm, see, is there a greatest common factor for this one? You always want to look for that first. It looks like maybe 4. So let's factor out a 4. That's 2c squared minus c minus 21, right? Okay, what multiplies to negative 42 but adds to negative 1? Well, negative 42 but adds to negative 1. So that's going to be negative 7c and positive 6c. Okay, and let's see, bring down the negative 21 and the 2c squared, factor by grouping, realize that these are added, right? Factor out the greatest common factor, which is c, factor out the greatest common factor, which is 3. If all goes well, you should have the same quantity in parentheses. See the 2c minus 7 and 2c minus 7? If you factor that out, you have 2c minus 7 times c plus 3, see c plus 3, and you bring down that 4. Now, because it's equal to 0, we set each group equal to 0. So c plus 3 equals 0 gives us c equals negative 3. And if we set 2c minus 7 equal to 0, we'd add the 7 and divide by 2, so that's going to come out to 7 halves or 3.5 or 3 and a half. Okay, for number 7 and number 8, it says find the zeros. Now remember, zeros just means we're setting this equation equal to 0. That's the only difference, right? Otherwise, we're just going to uh, factor out the greatest common factor, which there's none. What two numbers multiply to 24 but add to 11? Well, that's going to be 8 and 3. So that's 8y and 3y adds up to 11y. Bring down the 2 and put the 12y squared. Factor by grouping now. Realize that these are added together still. Factor out the greatest common factor, which is 4y. Factor out the greatest common factor here. There's really nothing, so we'll just factor out a, a 1, basically, because 1 times anything is itself. You can see we have a 3y plus 2 in common. If we factor that out, we're left with 4y plus 1. See, 4y plus 1. And again, if you multiply all this out, you're going to get back the original, but we're going to set it equal to 0 since we're finding the zeros. 3y plus 2 equals 0. Let's see, if we subtract 2 and divide by 3, that's going to give us negative 2 thirds. Right, negative 2 thirds. And then here, if we subtract 1 divided by 4, we're getting negative 1 fourth. So those are our two zeros, meaning that's where it's going to cross the x axis at negative 2 thirds and negative 1 fourth. And the last one, there's not a greatest common factor, so what two numbers multiply to negative 10 but add to positive 3? Well, that's going to be 5a and negative 2a. Bring down the negative 2 and bring down the 5a squared. Factor by grouping, realize that these are added together, and factor out the greatest common factor, which is 5a. Here we can factor out the greatest common factor, which is negative 1. No, it's negative 2, actually, my mistake. So that's going to give you a plus 1. And you know you're on the right track because you see how they have an a plus 1 in common. If you factor out that a plus 1, you're left with 5a minus 2. Remember, we're finding the zero, so if we set these groups equal to 0 and solve, we get 
negative one and add the two and divide by five, that's gonna give you a is equal to two fifths and negative one. So those are your two zeros and you've got it. So go ahead and review this if you need to, but this is a nice technique uh, as opposed to the trial and error method or the guess and check method as it's sometimes called. Here we call this splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping, okay? And the key is to multiply a times c, what multiplies to that number, but adds to the middle coefficient. They have to be the same uh, two numbers that multiply that number, but add to the middle coefficient and you got it. So great job, I'll see you in the next lesson.